Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the RSR Video Email Bag Show. Now here's the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Your host, Bad Brad Berkwit. Forget about it. Out of the tree of life, I just picked me a plum. You came along and everything started in to hum. Still, it's a real good bet. The best is yet to come. Hey, folks. <clears throat> good morning from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody once again. I hope you picked out on turkey but it's back to work Monday morning, even for me, folks. And if you forgot what show this is, it's the RSR Video Email Bag Show. Now, I just want to say, since our last show, we picked up 21 new subscribers. Forget about it. I can't believe it. 21 new subscribers. I can't thank you enough, folks. I double forget about it on that one. Now, I want to remind you that when we hit 700 subscribers, and we're getting really close, once we hit it, we are going to select one person from the United States or overseas, randomly, whoever that may be, and they are going to win a highly collectible, and everybody's talking about it on Facebook, personally autographed picture from the one and only Larry, the Eastern Assassin Holmes, who was the WBC and the IBF heavyweight champion of the world from 1978 to 1985. So hit that button and subscribe. It's in the top right corner over there. All right, where you see all that light, that's the light coming in because usually I shoot at night, but today, we're shooting bright and early because we got a several shows. I got to catch up. I got so many questions over this weekend. We had to break them up. My assistant put them in different categories, and I am going to be answering all of your questions. And again, make sure you subscribe again and again and again and tell your buddies and your pals and your friends or whatever you call them. If they love boxing, they're going to love this show. Now, if you want to be on my next show, don't leave your questions on Facebook. Don't send them to me and I am because that's not how we take your questions. Email them into ringside report 2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringside report 2014 at gmail.com. Now, without further ado, forget about it. Let's get into your questions. Again, good morning from Tulsa, Oklahoma. First question up is, <clears throat> Bad Brad, just subscribed after seeing your last show with the Ward Kovalev stuff. Thanks for keeping it real and not, keeping it real and not talking down to your viewers, but to them, but talking to them in a way that even the most novice boxing fan can understand. I cannot tell you how many writers or guys with YouTube channels who I have stopped following because of their I am better than my viewers attitude. Screw that. You have no show without us viewers. I want to ask you, what are your thoughts on the Lomachenko and Walters fight this past weekend? I like Walters, but he embarrassed himself by quitting a la Roberto Duran in the No Moss fight against Sugar Ray Leonard. Can't wait to see your answer to my question. Happy holidays, Richie P. from Holbrook, Long Island. Well, Richie P., good morning to you, pal. That's a new name. Holbrook, Long Island. My aunt used to live out there, believe it or not, years and years ago. Now, I absolutely agree. Let me, before I answer your question about this, I'm better than my viewers. No, you're not better than your viewers if you got a YouTube boxing channel. 
You have no channel. You have no show unless you have viewers. And that's why I started out and said we picked up 21 new subscribers because I'm never going to talk down to my viewers. Even the Mama Lukes that once in a while email me. I'm not going to talk down to you, but I'm not going to put up with your crap if you're a Mama Luke. But there is no show without the viewers. And I know plenty of writers like you're talking about. Forget about it. I won't name names unless I have to. That talk down to their readership and don't even answer their questions. That's just ridiculous. There's no show without the viewers. I appreciate each and every one of you, including you, Richie P. from Long Island. <clears throat> now, what did I think of the Lomachenko versus Walters fight? And what do I think of Walters? Okay, first of all, see, many people say the fix was in. I don't agree with that. I don't like how Walters went out. He should have went out in the shield. He quit. No mas, absolutely. He should be embarrassed, absolutely. And he talked a lot of shit before the fight, so he should be doubly embarrassed. However, nobody knows what's going through a fighter's mind and what it's like to get punched by Vasily Lomachenko and get completely outboxed. Walters wasn't in the fight from the very first bell till he quit. Tony Weeks did an outstanding job as a referee. The judges didn't have to judge it, though it should have been seven rounds to nothing uh, Lomachenko, but Nicholas Walters, nonetheless, is still a great fighter. I still think he can beat a lot of fighters, but he did embarrass himself. He will be back. I don't personally think the fix was in. There was a big disparity in paydays. I think uh, Vasily got a million and Walters got 300000 but I'll be honest with you. These are the type of fights where these fighters have certain actions that they do, like uh, recently Malik Scott, which was a freaking joke against Luis Ortiz, who didn't fight at all. Walters tried. The quitting, the commission could look at it and possibly fine him. I, you know, I don't think he should be fine, but they could still look at it and, and make a decision from there. I, like I said, again, I don't think he should, where I do think Malik Scott should have got part of his purse. Definitely take it, because he didn't fight at all. At least Walters tried. What you saw is a damn good fighter on Walters get completely outboxed by a very special fighter and Vasily Lomachenko. And with a couple more signature wins, I think he's going to be pound for pound, knock whoever is in the number one spot in the pound for pound rankings. All right? So there's my question. No fix. I can see how people could think that because he quit. But realistically, why would he be embarrassed like that and take a beating like he did? I mean, he get brutally beaten. But he took enough of a beating, and it was embarrassing, so I don't I don't think it was fixed. All right, Richie P., happy holidays to you too, pal. Next up, Bad Brad. Not trying to sound like a gushing fan, but I have to tell you, I love your show, funny stories, and always keeping it real. If you noticed your YouTube subscriber numbers going up since your last show, I had several of my boys subscribe, and they freaking love you too, man. I see on Ringside Report... You put a pound-for-pound pound poll and wanted to get who you think should sit on the top of the list and why. Thanks, Mike T. from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, Mike T. from Tulsa, Oklahoma, my homeboy. I did put a pound-for-pound pound, uh, rank a poll, I should say, on Ringside Report yesterday. And the fighters that I picked were Andre Ward, Vasily uh, Lomachenko, Roman Gonzalez, and Gennady Triple D, Triple G, Golovkin. Now, your question was, who do I think should be pound for pound? In my opinion, drum roll, wait for it, Andre Ward. Now, people are going to scream and say, he got a gift decision. It was a robbery against Sergey Kovalev. Hey, forget about it. I agree that Kovalev won the fight. I agree. You get no argument out of me on that one. But Andre Ward is not a judge, and he beat a hell of a fighter in Sergey Kovalev, he got the decision. We want the rematch, and we'll see what happens from there. But based on his opposition and getting the win against Kovalev, whether you agree with the judges or not, he did get the win. You have to place him number one on the pound-for-pound pound list, in my opinion. If he loses to Sergey Kovalev in the rematch, then Sergey takes the number one spot. 
but you can't put him at number one, in my opinion, again, which I'm entitled to, at number one, because Andre Ward did get the decision, whether you agree with it or not. So number one, Andre Ward. All right, folks, and on the Andre Ward note, we're going to take a short Commercial break. Hello, folks. This is Jerry Pierce, and you're watching the RSR Video Email Bag Show, hosted by Bad Brad Berkwit. And remember, viewers, when it comes to Ringside Report, the best is yet to come, and babe, it's gonna be fine. Hey, folks. This is Bad Brad Berkwit, the host of the RSR Video Email Bag Show. Forget about it. And I want to talk to you about an exciting opportunity to advertise or sponsor on my show. If you're interested, send serious business inquiries to ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Forget about it. <clears throat> Excuse me? What? Aren't we supposed to be doing a shoot for your book ad? Uh, yeah, but I'm reading right now, I'm reading an interview in my book with James Quick Tillis, and I tell you what, I didn't realize I did a heck of an interview. And? And uh, I guess we do need to do this book ad. Yeah. Hey folks, here's the book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime, by the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing, me, forget about it. All right, there it is on the back, okay, and on the front. Now, how do you order this book? You go to authorhouse.com and you'll pick it up wholesale. You'll save a few fazoos, forget about it. But if you want to go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble, you can do that too. You're just going to pay retail that way. Now for all the folks that ask me, yes, I will take this book here if you mail it to me and cover postage and handling to Tulsa and to wherever you live in the world. I will personally autograph your book. Again, boxing interviews of a lifetime. Bye. The man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad bread out. Folks, we're now back with the RSR Video Email Bag Show. And it's early morning in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you can see over here all that bright light coming through my office window. And if you forgot who I am and you're living under a rock or you moved to another planet, or you live out in the woods, or whatever the case may be, forget about it. I'm the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood. And again, this is the RSR video email bag show where I take your questions, I don't cherry pick, and I answer them. Now, again, we picked up 21 subscribers from the last show and I can't thank you enough. So keep hitting that freaking button and subscribe, 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 and you will win. Somebody will win a personally autographed picture from the one and only Larry, the Eastern Assassin Holmes. Again, check us out on ringsidereport.com where we are known since 2004 as the heart of boxing. And if you want to be on my next show, send your questions in to Ringside Report 2014 at gmail.com. That's Ringside Report 2014 at gmail.com. Now let's get to the remainder of your questions this early morning. Forget about it. Next up, Bad Brad, I picked up a few copies of your boxing book to give out as a Christmas gift this year. They should arrive this week. Since I already had it for quite some time, I want to ask you about a gentleman in it that I had never heard of, but enjoyed your interview with him named Davey Pearl. I did come to find out he was a referee for major fights such as Leonard versus Hearns 1 and the first Spinks versus Ali fight. Enjoyed him talking about the fight with you in your book. What else can you tell me that might not have made it into your interview with him. Tony C. from Woodland Hills, California. Well, Tony C., first of all, welcome to the show. I don't know that name. Thank you for picking up copies of my book and supporting me. The book is Boxing Interviews a Lifetime. If you guys didn't know that, Davey Pearl, man, sadly, he uh, 
he passed away several years ago and he died from such a horrible heartbreaking disease Alzheimer's dementia but in Yiddish they have a word and it's mensch that means human being that was Davy Pearl uh, Tony from time to time he'd call me out of the blue he'd see how I was doing he'd send me stuff in the mail in my file cabinet in my office I've got stuff that he sent me pictures um, you can't see now you can't see in the background there's a picture there's a picture of Al Martino if you see where my finger is pointing above you can't see it but that's actually Davy Pearl who sent it to me and that's Larry Holmes versus Ernie Shavers I think the first fight when uh, Shavers lost the decision to Holmes I think he was a referee if not it was the second one when he knocked him out but not before Ernie dropped Larry Holmes first he was such a sweet man he was an absolute doll. I mean, Frank Sinatra once said about Jimmy Durante that Jimmy was a sweet bar of chocolate. That's what I would call Davy Pearl. He was such a nice man. I miss him. He's in boxing heaven with all the greats. And he's an underrated, fantastic referee. I don't think he's an International Boxing Hall of Fame. I could be wrong. But if he's not, he needs to go in there. I don't know why he's not. In fact, I'm going to inquire and find out. So check back with me down the road after I find out. I'm going to contact them and see what the deal is. At first, I'm going to research to see if he's in there. And if he's not, I'm going to find out, has he ever been on a ballot? Because he should be. All right. Thanks for your great, great, great. I sound like Donald Duck. Great question. Last question of this email back show. Bad brand. My Mr. Forget About It man. I've had you on my mind for neat week. I can't talk. Weeks. <laughs> Usually at night, I might have stung tight. It's very early in the morning, folks. I've had you on my mind for weeks now, but the holidays have me busy at work. Don't think because your favorite blue Jew, oh, I know who this is, doesn't write into you that I forgot how hot and funny you are and know you're boxing like my dad does cigars. He said hi, by the way. I want to ask you about your favorite singer, Frank Sinatra, and tie it into boxing for me. Was he a fan? If so, tell me some good stories. I know you can't off the top of that sexy head of yours. Wishing you and yours a wonderful holiday from your blue Jew. Hugs and kisses, Janice from the Bronx. Mama sugar to your back. I was wondering where you're at. I, I can understand you're working in regards to your father. I always am happy to hear that your father is doing well and again happy holidays to you and happy holidays to all the viewers that watch the rsr video email back show frank sinatra i'll give you a couple there jan that's my blue jew first of all he did love boxing he was the photographer for the first muhammad ali versus joe frazier fight at Madison square garden in march of 1971 life magazine the cover, which I have in my collection, I should have taken it out, but I didn't have the questions in front of me, so I thought he was going to ask me this. He got the cover shot. Joe Lewis was sick. Sinatra put him on his plane, had him flown out to a heart specialist, paid all the bills, paid for his funeral. Uh, he had money come out of his contract with Anheuser-Busch when he performed a concert that directly went to Sugar Ray Robinson. And the list goes on and on, and I can't tell you the countless actors that Frank helped. Frank, in Yiddish, as I said about Davy Burrow, a mensch. Of course, I love him for his music and his movies, but I truly adore him and love him for his humanitarian efforts and his goodwill towards his brothers in boxing that doesn't get enough publicity. But Frank didn't want publicity for it. He wasn't that type. Like these structures that you see, they, they walk you across the street and they want the Medal of Honor for it. You know, Frank was class. And I miss him. He's up there with my dad and the rest of these boxing greats. So Janice, my blue Jew darling to you and your father. Again, happy holidays. All right, folks. That's another RSR video email back show in the can, as we always say. Forget about it. And one more time, make sure you hit that button and subscribe to the RSR Video Email Bag Show. Why? 
because I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Keep sending your great questions in. Your great, what am I, Dr. Daffy freaking duck today? Your great questions. Your great, I'm cracking myself up. I'm here to make you laugh, and I laugh at myself. Remember, if you can't laugh at yourself, folks, then you got no freaking sense of humor. I won't mention any names, but there's somebody out there that loves Twitter who ain't got no freaking sense of humor. We won't mention any names. I'll let you figure out the inside joke. But again, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out ringsidereport.com, the heart of boxing. Since 2004, I got a great team of writers. Check us out on Facebook and our forum, Ringside Report. We have close to 23,000. I said over 23,000 last show. I was incorrect. We're close. We're at like 22,700. So join and tell all your boxing buddies about us. And you can check us out on Twitter at Newsbreaker PR. Send me a, a what is it, a follow or whatever you call it on Twitter. And I'll follow you back. All right, folks, and remember, as Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently, so long ago, the best is yet to come. Bad Brad out. <laughs>